This is the Hauchi Cheetah, an e-bike that claims to go 28 miles an hour and up to 85 miles on a charge. Now we've brought it into the Tool Show Labs. We're going to carefully measure its speed, acceleration, braking, range, seat height, and more. Then we'll put the results into our score sheet, calculate the values, and find out where it lands on our tool list. Let's go. Welcome back guys, I'm Rob, and this is the Tool List, where we test without the bias intervention of humans and score things using a custom algorithm that gets more accurate the more we test. Today, we're continuing our e-bike series with this. This is the Hauchi Cheetah. It's a front suspension, fat tire cargo bike with a 750 watt rear hub motor, a pair of 48 volt batteries that add up to 25 amp hour, and they say it will get you up to 85 miles on a charge. It's also the first full suspension e-bike we've tested with adjustable forks up front and a fast ace AB suspension in the rear, making this easily the most comfortable bike we've used over rough terrain, and you can get your own today for around $19.49. Always be sure to check the manufacturer websites for the latest prices. Now, before we get into the performance testing, we're first going to highlight its features, all of which are calculated into the final score, starting with the brakes. The Cheetah has hydraulic disc brakes, which use fluid that transfers the force from the brake lever to the caliper. Now, this is most often more powerful, longer lasting, and requires less maintenance than a typical mechanical brake, which is why we're happy to see them here. Next, we look at the size of the brake discs. On a heavy e-bike, we wanna see at least 180 millimeters, and on the Cheetah, we find exactly that. Moving on to safety and starting with the headlight, we offer points for including a headlight, of course, which we think is incredibly important if you're gonna be using an e-bike in traffic. But there are extra points if the light is bright enough for us to actually ride at 20 miles an hour in the dark. The Cheetah's light will definitely help you be seen, and it was just bright enough for us to ride around in the dark. Of course, the tail light's important too. It's fairly normal to find a light on the back of each one of these bikes, but we get bonus points if it also acts as a brake. The Cheetah's tail light is indeed a brake light as well. Next up is suspension. You're likely going to find a set of suspension forks on just about any of these e-bikes that we've tested. This will smooth out bumps and just make your ride more comfortable. The front forks are adjustable too, which is super nice, and unlike most other bikes we've tested so far, the Cheetah also has a rear suspension, which goes a long way to help it handle rougher terrain. Now, we drove all six of these through our rough horse trail through the woods, and the Cheetah was easily the most comfortable and capable on that trail. Next, let's cover throttles and pedal assist. Now, most bikes will have a throttle, either a twist grip like you find on a motorcycle, or a thumb throttle you operate with, you guessed it, your thumb. The Cheetah here has a very comfortable twist grip. As we explained in our first e-bike test, there are two very different kinds of pedal assist. There's cadence sensor, which is triggered by pedaling but runs on its own, or a torque sensor that measures the amount of force that you put into pedaling and automatically applies a bit of help. Now, cadence sensors are less expensive, but they're also less intuitive. Essentially, they push your bike to a predetermined speed no matter how fast you're pedaling. Unfortunately, the Cheetah has a cadence sensor, which we found to be a bit cumbersome, especially off-road. But when we did hit the rough stuff, we just used the throttle to control the speed, and we got along just fine. Let's talk about the battery, specifically the battery size. The standard model comes with a 15 amp hour, 48 volt battery, but we got the dual battery version, which pushes it to 25 amp hour or 1200 watt hour. Hauchi says that this should get you 65 to 85 miles per charge. We'll get to the range test in just a minute. Of course, the size of your battery doesn't matter if it's empty. Each bike comes with a charger rated by how many amps it outputs. The more the amps, the quicker you're back on the road. The Hauchi Cheetah comes with a pair of two amp chargers, which was tied for first among the bikes we tested so far. Now, based on its battery size, you're looking at about a 6.6 .6 hour charge from zero to 100. On to weight, these bikes are heavy not just because of the batteries, motor, and electronics, but because the frame has to be strong enough to support all of that as well, which makes the frame heavier too. Now the Cheetah weighed in at 88.8 .8 pounds, placing it in fifth on our list. Now we realize for our audience, storage is super important. If you're going to be using this bike to replace your car or truck on a nice day, you'll need places to safely store your stuff. The Cheetah, unfortunately, doesn't have an option for a front rack, but that's kind of to be expected for an off-road bike like this. It does, however, have an awesome rear rack that comes included with the bike. Gears. The Cheetah has a seven-speed Shimano gear shifter and derailleur. As it turns out, all six of the bikes that we've tested so far have the same number of speeds, which left us a bit disappointed. When you're really pushing these guys at speeds over 20 miles an hour, 
even seventh speed will leave you pedaling at a ridiculous pace. A higher gear would have gone a long way. Next, we cover height range. To do that, we bottom out and then extend the seat to the maximum recommended height and measure the difference. The Cheetah can be adjusted from 34 to 43 inches, a range of nine inches in total, which tied for second. Now, we don't have a good way to test cargo capacity without purposefully destroying the bikes. During our endurance and acceleration testing, we put around 480 pounds of weight across the bike in our test trailer, and all six bikes manage that just fine. So we're going to trust the manufacturer's numbers for this one. The cargo capacity for the Cheetah is rated at 400 pounds, which made it tied for third. Now the Cheetah is technically a class three with a throttle which would explain the claimed top end of 28 miles an hour. But as you'll see in our top speed test, we were never able to get it that fast. But you can also use it as a class one or two. All right, on to performance testing. First up, let's look at acceleration. For this test, we wanted to use the throttle only to get from zero to 15 miles an hour as fast as we could. First, I got on the bike along with a heavy duty trailer and a few hundred pounds of weights, bringing the total to 480 pounds of cargo. Then for the other end, we've got her. Some say she keeps double the recommended air pressure in her tires and prefers to be called a full suspension bike tester. All we know is she's called the twig and at only 120 pounds, she's likely to get this thing going faster and farther on a charge. All right, let's get testing. We learned early on that you can rarely trust the computers on these bikes. So instead we're using a highly accurate performance analyzer to get exact speed and time. With a cheetah loaded the full weight, it took 14.48 seconds to get to 15 miles an hour. And that left it in fourth place. Next, the twig took a turn and was able to hit 15 miles an hour in only 4.69 seconds, placing it in fourth. Moving on to top speed. Now to get this number, we turned them all onto their highest assist and I pedaled as hard as I could on a very flat road. Now, despite the 28 mile an hour claim, we could never get the bike over 23. It would get to that speed and the motor would stop helping. I tried this several times and on the last attempt, the bolt holding the derailleur came loose, causing the derailleur to flip up, bend in half, and the chain broke. If you look closely, you can actually see the rear tire got caught up in the chain and I slid for around 20 feet. Not fun. Houchi was quick to help us though and we got this fixed. Braking. Now once you're going that fast, you're gonna want to stop fast too. And to test the brakes, I sped each bike up to 15 miles an hour and then applied both brakes as hard as I could. The Cheetah was able to come to a stop in 15 feet, which was not great. It was the worst we tested by about one and a half feet. Range. And finally, we talk about range. Houchi says you should be able to get around 65 to 85 miles on pedal assist modes. Now, since we can't reliably pedal for testing, we set each bike to 20 miles an hour and ran the full battery out on throttle alone. Each bike was run around our three mile test circuit that simulates a typical city commute with lots of speed adjustments and turns. I would ride it first with my 480 pound setup and run the battery down until the bike quit. Then we completely recharge it and have the twig do the same. With a full battery and a heavy load, I was able to get 21.34 miles, but that put it in third place. The Twig was able to get 39.99 miles, landing in fourth. To determine efficiency, we took the Twig's range numbers and calculated how many watt hours it was burning through per mile. And it came out to 30.01 watts per mile, earning it sixth place for efficiency. And finally, let's talk value. To assign a value score, we took the current price of each bike and then tallied up all of the bike's other points then divided those points by the dollar amount. Now, while our resulting number is completely arbitrary to you, it allows us to generate a rank that you can understand. In this case, the Houchi Cheetah earned a value score of 4.69, which put it in sixth place for value. Now, I wanna remind you that all of these e-bike companies regularly put these bikes on sale. That can drastically change the value of these bikes and the position on our list. So if a bike checks off most of your boxes and it suddenly goes on sale, it just might be your best purchase. So now we're done examining the features and testing the performance and even measuring its value. 
When we add all of those scores up, we get a final score that ranges between 1 and 10. If you'd like to learn more about our adaptive scoring system, check out our first e-bike review where we go more in depth on the process. With everything calculated, the Cheetah gets a 7.2, which puts it in sixth place overall. Now there's nothing specific that stands out to us as riders that put this thing in sixth, but it was certainly disappointing that we couldn't get it over 23 miles an hour. But as I stated before, it felt more than capable on our off-road trail through the woods and was the most comfortable on rough terrain. But the rest of the numbers put it in last place. Now in the coming days, we'll be publishing a video for each of these other five e-bikes right here on the tool list. And shortly after that, we'll launch our first class of power tool testing, drill drivers. You won't want to miss it. Now full disclosure, while our testing is all unbiased, we feel obligated to let you know that the bike was provided to us for free by Hauke, specifically for this testing. With the understanding that we don't control the test, nor the scores, Consequently, the participating brands have no say in our scoring or content. That's it for this one. If you'd like to learn more about the Hakoi Cheetah, or Haukoi, however you pronounce it, we'll be linking to their website in the description. I'll see you next time.